What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm continuing to monitor several tropical waves in the Atlantic Ocean right now. The first one is over here that is approaching the Lesser Antilles. The second one is over here that just emerged into the Eastern Atlantic Ocean that is now cruising through the main development region. And I'm also paying attention to this area right here that has been tagged by the National Hurricane Center for a potential area of interest, potential development. We're going to go ahead and go over this real quickly. An area of low pressure is expected to form in a day or so, in uh, or sorry, a day or so, several hundred miles to the east northeast of Bermuda. This system is expected to interact with a uh, upper lo level trough, and it could acquire some tropical or tropical characteristics during the middle to later part of this week, as it moves generally eastward. By the weekend, the low should turn to the northward and bring the system to cooler waters, which would likely limit additional development. Formation chance in the next seven days is still 30%, so definitely something we need to keep an eye on over here. If we take a look at the Eastern Pacific, we now have a 50% chance of development of an, of an area of interest over here, as well as basically this thing not developing anymore. It did have a 90% chance of development, however, it ended up not pulling through. Just the storm centers was just not organized enough. So that's what we have going on right here. And if we take a look at this at satellite imagery right now, uh, this is the area where it's supposed to develop. I believe it's this line of convection that is going to be moving through, or it's this one. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll have to wait and see the next couple of days with NHC tags. But, yeah, definitely increased activity as the month of July continues to go on. Another thing I've been paying attention to is all the components, the global sea temperatures, the OHC, the shear, the everything that's going on. So one thing we need to uh, really keep in mind is that this is 2023. We have the warmest global sea temperatures on record. As you can see, we are seeing a very wide area of 31 plus degrees Celsius across Cuba, south of Louis on the Louisiana coast, parts of southwestern Florida, including Naples, parts of the Bahamas. So things are really starting to ramp up. And these are temperatures you would typically see in late August right here. And already it's still early July and we're seeing this stuff. So I'm getting a little worried to see and I'm a little anxious to see how high these temperatures can go because of that fact because right now we're already over 88 degrees in a lot of these areas we're at over 90 in a couple of areas in Florida which uh, Fahrenheit in Florida which that's pretty scary to me considering how quickly these waters are warming up right here and if we take a look at the ocean heat content that's also pretty incredible what's going on so far the, the loop current over here we're seeing OHC of over 150 Across the Caribbean, we are seeing a very large area of 125 plus OHC right now. So that's a lot of energy for anything that develops in there if, it, if the other conditions get better. But I want to compare this to 2020 once again, because if we take a look at it, in 2020, this is what we had. We had a smaller area of OHC developing in the Caribbean Sea and the Bahamas over here, and we didn't really have too much going on in the loop current just yet. Now this is 2023, and if you take a look at these differences right here, these are, like, it's absolutely incredible. We're seeing a lot more OHC. This massive blob off the coast of Jamaica over here, we're looking at OHC of over 175, close to 200, actually, and that's the best, uh, that's the best waters in, over there. And another thing I've been paying attention to is this area over here in the Atlantic region right here. The OHC, the larger OHC values, have gone hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles further to the north now than they did back at this time in 2020. And 2020, for those of you who remember, was a very hyperactive hurricane season. So that right there is quite frankly concerning to me. And then we have to also take a look at the wind shear, which the wind shear is continuing to fluctuate as time continues to go on. However, in the main development region, the wind shear is generally around 10 to 15 knots, which is ideal for development. And I want to go ahead and take a look at the eastern Atlantic over here because that's where this tropical wave is. And considering the warm waters, which are over 28 degrees Celsius, as well as the OHC over there, which is over 50 uh, OHC, where it's at right now, if we take a look at the wind shear, it's in good conditions for de uh, for development right now if it takes the opportunity to do so. So we that's why I'm really monitoring this 
potential tropical wave over here. I want to take a look at the moisture uh, component over there. I want to see the moisture. And if we take a look at it, this is where this tropical waves it is. It's in that moisture pocket over there. It is surrounded by moderately dry air, so keep that in mind, which may potentially inhibit development. But either way, the shear and the warm waters are still th are still there if it wants to do anything from that. But this is what we got going on. This is this whole system. This is this whole wave going through. We have several more waves you can see through the moisture blobs that are going on right here. The Sahara dust is still kicking up right here, so that's probably going to be going on until late July. That's going to that's when they start weakening, and that's when also the wind shear starts weakening, and that's when we start seeing more tropical systems starting to develop. Now I want to go ahead and take a look at the forecasted wind shear according to the European. This is the zero Z euro that I have pulled up right here and right now. And as you can see, the shear across the main development region is. It's pretty good. It's pretty good right now. It's pretty good for development. Uh, just to the north of it is a little bit, a uh, little bit less so. So that's interesting. But I'm really paying attention for at least for the next a few, at least for the next couple of months. This fluctuating wind shear right here, because if we take a look at this, the Gulf has been f continuously fluctuating, and the Caribbean Sea, although we it is still relatively sheared, it has started to fluctuate a little bit in July. You can see that fluctuation starting and initiating right there. But by July 12th, actually in the two days. The wind shear across the MDR, across parts of the Atlantic, and even in the Eastern Caribbean, really starts weakening considerably during one of those trends. And this is what what one of those fluctuations I was talking to you about. Although this does seem a bit more la uh, long lasting right here, at least for the next two to three days before things start to build. The shear starts building up and things start to get look a little bit more unfavorable. But this is definitely an interesting scenario, and it really goes to show that even though it's July, the waters are piping hot. The shear is what's really saving a lot of people right now from getting tropical systems. Although we're not sure how long that's going to really last, considering that starting after July 20th, we're going to start seeing the wind shear start collapsing considerably across the Atlantic. And we're also going to start seeing this hair dust receding as well, which would also moisten the air in the Atlantic quite a bit. So that's what we have going on right here. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the European Ensemble runs right here. The European Ensemble, this is the Zero Z, and this kind of gives an indicator of what potential system may develop. And this is that tropical wave that I was talking to you about that's over here right now in the, Atl in the Atlantic. That's what these Ensemble members are showing. Right now, they're not showing too much development, but they are showing, at least in the next six days, another tropical wave coming off and start things starting to really ramp up in intensity right here. We are looking at one ensemble run of a hurricane potential right there. The pressure is 975 millibars. Two ensemble runs of tropical storm strength for another wave right there. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And then you have these uh, several ensemble runs that have it cl getting closer to the Lesser Antilles. And then basically as time continues to go on, we have another wave coming off. This is about 10 days out, so this is a bit unreliable, so keep that in mind. But the European ensemble runs have this thing really starting to show quite a few scenarios of hurricane to strong tropical storm strength at least 15 days out. So that's definitely something right there to pay attention to. However, this is just one run right here. I want to go ahead and pull up the GF GEFS runs. And as you can see, this is the 12Z. We're going to go ahead and go back to the 0Z for comparison reasons right there. If we go right here, the GFS has a few other ensembles going on similar to the Euro. However, it's not as many compared to that, so definitely something to take with a grain of salt. The GEPS doesn't even have anything 360 days out compared to what the Euro is, so it goes to show do not rely on one model run before you make conclusions for yourself. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Thank you for sticking by. I really appreciate the support from the last video. It really t exceeded my expectations. It got 3,000 views. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for those who are subscribing. We've got 15 new subs since the video dropped, and I cannot be more thankful for you guys. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.